Hey everybody, welcome back to the Triple C Collective here. I'm your host, Jimmy Clark. We're doing another comparison commentary track. Today with me, I've got my guest and co-host and co-founder, Colin Shea. What's up, Colin? Not much, man. How are you feeling? You it, feeling? It, it's been a while. This has been nice for us to, you know, be able to get together and uh, like kind of kind of do something a little bit special here. You know, um, today's commentary track comparison is going to be for 30 Days a Night. Um, this is something, let, let, let me ask you this. For 30 Days a Night, what did you see first? Or what did you come in contact with first? The comic or the movie? The movie. I definitely... Uh, I don't think I was even like reading comics like that when the movie came out. Uh, I definitely saw the movie in theaters. I don't remember with who. I was trying to think of it with early, earlier. But uh, 2007. That would have yeah. been like our senior year of high school. Uh, okay. It's probably an ex-girlfriend or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I remember seeing it. And I remember loving it when it came out. Yeah, yeah, me too. So like I, I, I'm in the same position. Uh, I saw the movie first. And then shortly, or I heard about the movie coming out, and I was just actually getting into the time of where I wasn't buying individual issues, but I was looking, I was on the uh, prowl for like trade paperbacks. Like I was just starting to get like Batman: The Long Halloween, Dark Victory, Definitely. like uh, the basics, Dark, right? like, like Dark Knight Returns. You know, all of the basic that's Superman. All those things were is like where I was starting to pick these thing, uh, these different comics up. So, um, 30 Days a Night, I, I heard about it, knew it was a comic before the movie, couldn't get the comic before the movie, but then I was actually gifted this copy by uh, one of my friends, uh, Matt Murphy. Shout out to you. Love you, dude. Um, hope you're well. Uh, and so, like, he gave me this as a gift, and I've been loving it ever since, and I, with ourselves our other uh, the other guy ed that i do commentary track comparisons why the last man we release those every monday um like this is another movie that's like in our repertoire but ed was like i am going to decline doing this because i see no difference between the movie and the comic because they are virtually the same and i was like I disagree, but that's fine. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, I, mean, I didn't read the comic, but I just flipped through it, and I was going to say there was a couple things that I noticed that were huge differences. Right. And that's just literally me flipping through the comics. And that, that, there was big, big differences, and there's clearly a, there's there's more to the story. Mm -hmm. After after 30 Days a Night, it doesn't just end there. Right, it doesn't. It keeps going. There's a, uh, there, what's there, it called? Uh, Return to Barrow? There's Dark Days, Return to Barrow. Um, Resurrection, I think there is a few of them. I also noticed this was autographed. Yeah, I what, actually... What's the author's uh, name? So again? the guy who wrote it is uh, is Steve Niles, and uh, then the art was done by Ben Templesmith, and that's actually who I met. Ben Templesmith uh, signed this. I met him at C2E2 in 2018. Uh, oh, I miss you, C2E2. Right. Uh, it's coming back in December. I, I can't make it. Um... Me neither. But, uh, so the comic, again, written by Steve Niles. And you know what? Steve Niles wrote a draft of this screenplay. He's credited as a screenplay. So, like, when you, once we dive into this a little bit more, my two big things that I felt that were very the same, and we'll touch on these points, the first act and the third act are surprisingly like dead on to mm -hmm. each other with very minor twists and turns. I noticed even the artwork's very, like, the, um, the cinematography, or in Bob's Burgers world, the cinematography. Uh, <laughs> it was very. It, it was it, the dark. The darkness was uh, felt. You know, it, it almost felt black and white at some points, and it yeah. wasn't. You know what I mean? Uh, um. So this comic was uh, written by Steve Niles, art by Ben Temple Smith. It was released by uh, Dark Horse. Uh, released by Dark Horse Comics and or IDW. Sorry, IDW did this. Dark Horse Entertainment, though, produced the movie, which gotcha. is interesting. Uh, <clears throat> wait, yeah, but the movie then is directed by David uh, Slade. Now, previous to Thirty Days a Night, he did a bunch of different music videos for gotcha. like it, it. Like if you name the artist, he's probably he probably oh. did a, a music video for him. Um, and then his first like feature was an indie hit with an. Uh, uh, Elliot Page. Like, it was one of his first movies, Hard Candy. 
David Slade directed that. Uh Aha. Like, way back when. And that, so, like, David Slade does Hard Candy. Yeah. His follow-up is 30 Days a Night. And then he moves on to the Hannibal TV series that is showrun by Brian uh, Fuller. So, like... David I haven't Slade, watched all of it, but that's a killer it, show. It really is. It's an awesome, awesome show. If you're trying to find something like really creepy and good and like horror, but awesome, awesome acting and stuff, and awesome writing for it, the Hannibal TV series with Mad Malkinson that they aired for three seasons on NBC. Shocking that it lasted that long yeah. on NBC. Fantastic. Go check it's on it out. Netflix. Uh, doesn't didn't Netflix pick it up? Yeah, Netflix is currently streaming it. I believe it could even be available on Hulu. Yeah. Um, I know that the Blu-rays for the complete season is out. That's how I own yeah. it and usually watch it. But so David Slade, he does that, and then people might also know him for doing the Twilight Eclipse movie. He directed that. Hmm. So not only has he done like like the dude's a horror guy, and it doesn't matter like what he's doing, whether it's a small indie like. Um, hard candy right. or whether it's like the comic book adaptation of like 30 days a night or whether it's the big blockbuster of like a book adaptation of twilight like the dude will put his mark kind of everywhere which is something TV, like yeah, movie. which is something that i didn't even like definitely not when this movie was released something that i didn't even think about even with like the guy handling this yeah. and it, it and it shows of why um like the guy like David Slade had a clear vision and clear execution of what he wanted to do with it. Um, as we said, it was the one draft of this screenplay, accredited screenplay, is Steve Niles himself. Um, Stuart Beatty is another guy who was credited for the screenplay. He wrote the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie uh-huh. with Johnny Depp. Curse of the Black My Pearl. Favorite one. Um, yeah, arguably still the best, uh, the best one that they've made. Um, so Stuart is a part of it. And then Brian Nelson. Brian Nelson was the co-writer or the writer of Hard Candy with David Slade. Okay. So like they these two team up for Hard Candy with Elliot Page and do it like have you seen that movie? Hard with, Candy. With, with, with Patrick Wilson too. Like that's what put Patrick Wilson of like the conjuring Aquaman, James Wan's main guy. Yeah, it, like re- that's what put him on the map okay, for me. Okay. Uh, remind me what is Okay, Hard Candy? so a little quick a little detour. Hard Candy is about Elliot Page being a thirteen year old um meeting up with an older man on the internet for sexual favors. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think I've seen And that. then there is a at like, I mean, this movie is it's like 14 yeah. years old now, so I I feel like it's been out there. Elliot Page is a is a huge mega movie star, been in everything right. that you can think of, worked with a ton of people. So like, this was like his like first debut in it, and, and like coming out like before Juno and everything. This was like what I found Elliot Page from, and um, so. They, Elliot Page lures Patrick Wilson in to meet up for the sexual favors. Freaking knocks the dude out. Put it like straps him down and removes his testicles. Nice. Sounds like so a it is for me. such a twist on yeah, what you yeah, would yeah, expect. Yeah. Well, it's and just like, a revenge flick, like a I'd say uh, it and it's like, like, like it, it's a... beautifully executed. It's a really it's a really tough movie to watch, and I get that. Yeah, like like be. like it's not an easy watch for sure, but like seeing Some that should like be hard to watch. Right? Um so sorry, that's our hard candy. Uh gotcha. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have seen it. Maybe. I'd have to go back and like check it out but i don't think um but uh, so yeah i mean go check with that the out repertoire I'm, I'm interested so it was really interesting these two guys like they they do something really like brian nelson and david Slade. they do something really different with hard candy and then they're like you know what let, let, let let's play a little bit they're with like in steve dark brown yeah yeah let, no, let, let's let, just let, do a little let, let's keep different. that going yeah, a little yeah. bit and then they start writing um then they take the adaptation with steve niles and stewart and they make this awesome movie of 30 days of night and this movie resubmitted a very important time for me for josh hartnett yeah because definitely. um everyone hated him because he was like the hottie he know? was in pearl he, harbor he made everyone he made everyone's girlfriend like you know? jealous yeah, he, like, he like, made, like, made every, boyfriends jealous, jealous. Girlfriends, but yeah, yeah girlfriends. because everyone's girlfriend wanted yeah. to be with him but like so 
so he also does this really interesting turn. He does 30 Days a Night at this time. He does um, Lucky Number Slevin with Bruce yep. Willis. Great movie. He, um, it's a oh, fantastic movie. If you've never seen Lucky Number Slevin, awesome action, like nonstop go, go, go thriller. Great Definitely stuff. Um, so he's our main guy, Evan. Um and I hate that name by the way. <laughs> do you keep any critique? I, I, Evan. I, I, is, is. I kept thinking it was Evan for the longest I mean, time. Been. Like yeah. Anyway. Um. <laughs> then we've got uh we've got Stella, who's played Stella. by um who is uh, Evan's her. wife, who is played by Melissa George. Now, Melissa George, you might have seen her previously in Mulholland Drive as Camilla, I believe. Yeah, Camilla, Camelia, Camilla. Um, she was also in Alias. Camelia. That would be cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> she is also in Alias. She plays Lauren Reed uh, with like Jennifer Gardner and stuff, that TV show. And then most recently she was in this movie called Peaceful that was released in 2021. Gotcha. Um, and then we have Marlo, who is Danny Huston. And I've, I've got to take a second here. Marlo is like so like a little divergent from the what we see in the movie to what we see in the comic is the vampires have their own storyline in the comic. Right, which is one, one of the things I've noticed just flipping through it, and I was like, ooh, that's interesting. And in retrospect, and before we get to it, I want to ask you something. Do you think now, with what we know about what they could do with series, that this series would be a good TV, like, Netflix series? Would this work better series? than I think that I think as a movie, and... this as a movie, there was a lot of stuff, like, character stuff that we couldn't get to. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a shame because I felt like a lot of the characters that die, you just don't. There's an you know entire I mean? subplot of a character from New Orleans. We'll get to that. Um, yeah. Um, later, but there's an entire subplot that is they just got rid whoop, of the, co- the colored just, character, just, right? J- j- just gone. There was a ca- um, colored character. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a it, it's I believe it's a, a a black man and his mother from yeah, New Orleans yeah. that um, believe in the vampire myth and are actually like vampire hunters. Trying so it's like, it's pseudo blade. Yeah, yeah. It's pseudo blade because you, because you got, problem. no one believes in and, yeah. and yeah, so he is being sent off and like, he goes off to try to find these people in Alaska because they get community. They, um, intercept. It's very like espin, espionage and like yeah, wartimey yeah. in that sense of like the, they, uh, the family from New Orleans, they get, they get information intercepted from vampires communicating, saying, hey, this city in Alaska called Barrow goes dark for 30 days. Vampire feeding frenzy. Right. And that is sent by Marlo um, in the comic, who is in the movie played by Danny Huston, and he is the main like vampire. You've seen Danny Huston way back wow. when in 21 Grand. He's um, a good character actor. He plays really good characters. Right. Like, uh, He's in Children of Men. He plays Stryker in the you, really bad X Men Origins him. movie. You might not remember his name, but you remember him. And yeah. And then he, more more recently, he was uh, Jamie uh, Laird in uh, Succession. Like, that's where he's um, popped up most recently. And so um, then we've got the last, like, I'm call, who I'm calling our last main character. Of the movie. I'm basing these main characters from, like, who we see in the movie and stuff. Gotcha. And the next one I am saying is The Stranger, played by Ben Foster. Ben Foster. So... Another good character actor, but he's, like, a little... He's so little good. In this. He, it will... Well, yeah. My point is, uh, uh, he's, he's, like, a familiar. He's the familiar. He is. He, yeah. You know what? At so, first, he's the stranger, but... We come to know him as the as a familiar, right? What we would what we would think of as a familiar. Um, somebody he, who somebody who works for the vampires in their best interest. He's hoping, the Redfield, hoping to become yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. hoping to become a vampire someday. Exactly, and he's a very interesting character, and he plays him so well. And, and he's, and he's so like, he like does the little mean. overacting, and yeah. I like it's fine though because it's a horror flick and it's meat. And, and, yeah, raw yeah. meat. <laughs> Whiskey, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and raw meat. Yeah. Like the, and he's great. And, and like yeah. th- th- this was truly the only other time I think I really saw Ben Foster, possibly before this or right around this same time, was him is an X Men Last Stand as like Archangel. Yep. 
Um, yeah, that was like, probably his biggest role. So, like, him. that's where I remember him. Apparently, he was also in Punisher in, from 2004 with, like, John Travolta and, like, Thomas Jane and stuff. I don't yeah, that really, movie's kind of like a, I, a trauma memory. I, I remember around it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, ben Foster, a little bit more recently, he was in Hell or High Water. That was a really sweet movie. And I, I, everybody in that was great. Right. Um, he plays a good bad guy. Yes. He, and, and, like, he's also in, um, uh, God, what's that, Pandorum movie? Pandorum? Pandorum. And it's, like, that outer space, like, like losing their mind with an infection. Gotcha. Like, oh, God, it's great. Yeah. It, that is a sleeper hit, by the way. Like, such a good, solid flick. Um, I've got one more shout-out. And I've got a shout-out to one of my favorite, um, like, Random pop up guys, and that's uh, Mark um, Boone Jr. He plays Bo in the movie. Gotcha. He was Flask in uh, Batman Beyond, and uh, he played uh, Bobby Elvis in Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. And yeah, like, 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 like the dude pops up in everything. And for me, when I see that guy pop up, like I always, I'm like, sweet, because he, I, I like him in every, I, I like him as Flask, I like him as, as Bobby Elvis, and like Sons of. Anarchy. I like him in everything that he does. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, pretty much everything like, he shows up. But he's an actor that not everybody knows his name. But again, you see him, you're like, I haven't seen that guy in something before. I'm pretty sure I can figure out. I'm pretty sure I've seen this guy yeah, in something. You're IMDb in it. And, uh, yeah, total imdb -er. And uh, so he is just great. And Bo is awesome in this, in this movie as well as a character. Now, so we've talked a little bit about the comic, a little bit about the movie, cast and stuff, right? Writing, directing. Now let's actually dive into it. Right now, um, how do you like the beginning of the movie? How how do you like like the opening? Like opening scenes. Opening scenes are striking. Uh, it, it it reminds you what Alaska's like. You know what I mean? It reminds you like how desolate and 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 oh, like, vast and like open. open spaces. And it's like we're from Chicago. And, you yeah, know, it's not. We're not used to that, seeing that. So you need that as an audience member. And, and seeing, uh, you know, the, the, the strangers, you call them, uh, show up. Yeah. You're just like, you just don't trust them. You know? Yeah, you're yeah, from, yeah. From immediately, you don't trust them. But, like, is it like, do I not trust this guy because, like, they're trying to set me up? Or is it like, I shouldn't? And then they show Josh Hartnett's character, you know, and, uh, and it's, it's like, part, oh, clearly, it's Billy. clearly, yeah, right. And then clearly we see our hero. Okay, so the and, first, so the first guy is not is bad news. What's he coming to do? So you know? like, but it, it was it was a striking scene, and I loved it. You know, I love that beginning scene. The one thing I will say is like I said this at the beginning when we first started is that um, I think with Steve Niles at least doing a draft, definitely being credited as the right as a writer of the screenplay here. The beginning is virtually the same mm -hmm. of like how in the comic it opens basically the exact same. It um. It shows like the just the vastness, open like spaces, just like the snow falling, the snow covered ground and mountains and everything. And what we see actually in the comic that we don't get in the movie is we see Eben and Stella together. Oh really? They in the comic they are together. They are partners, like deputy, like both deputy sheriffs, whatever. The whole thing. The, There's the, no the, the really entire time. drama at all. The, it, I mean, and at besides least like it, normal. Aside from like your run of the mill normal, uh, like kind of bigger. I wish bigger, they would have kept it. That there way. was there was nothing like that at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, I felt that was an unnecessary element to that movie. And then, but yeah, but then in the beginning, we we see that in the, of the movie, they're 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 but separated. But I guess for her to try like, to get, she was trying to get out. So it's like I could see, I could do, but yeah, I don't know. I, well, I, I think the, I think I would have liked them working together as a team. Like we don't see that enough. Like. True. It's always we don't. Like, we get we get little bits of it's it. It's always like, oh, it takes this trauma to get back together, and it's like, Whoa, that's fucking toxic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. We have to go it's through like, trauma to I be have to, together. Like, I have to die for you to realize we loved each other. Like, no, nah, it's. I wish they would have um, kind of kept them. Kept in a, yeah, that that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So like, they're till they're together in a relationship. I wonder why still. they did that in the movie for t um, for tension, maybe for tension to like because I will say. At least in the first one, like, to a benefit of the movie and to something that we don't get in this first trade here is that you get a lot of 
personal backstory of the of these characters and in he, and in the comic it's kind of run and gun because they give you three different storylines you have the townspeople of burrow and Eben and stella and then you also have the vampires of marlo reaching out to the head vampire v and marlo's little crew of vampires and then you also have the uh family the the uh, the the son and the mother that are like very much so like the blade characters um or like pseudo like so right the away story. In, in this in this in the comics we see um that there's vampires coming yeah in this in the movie i did appreciate the fact that if you didn't know it was a vampire movie at first, you didn't know it was a vampire. You movie. don't you don't know that it's a vampire movie until uh, until truly the end of the that first was, act, about twenty five minutes. Well, in. It was about twenty, yeah, twenty twenty, 20 twenty five minutes, minutes yeah, yeah. yeah, something like that. Uh, where there's the where first there's this incident, uh, everything else before that that was like violent was uh the the dude, mm-hmm. uh the stranger, uh he uh but i thought that was interesting i thought that was i thought that was cool so yeah. I, I you know what i mean i like this that was the good tension mm-hmm. and instead of the like the relationship tension which i felt was unnecessary it yeah was an unnecessary plot point that was like so of its time probably i get yeah. it i get it, it was, but, like if they like i said all of this stuff you're saying now seems to be that would be a cool series yeah. That would be a neat. That would be fun to watch, uh, and even like see them as like a Mister and Mrs. Smith type of team, like actually right. working together and like you know mm-hmm. running the town as as the as the. Um, and I almost wonder though, because they did sequelize the movie eventually. They made a second one and then they stopped, but FX um, did the strain that Guillermo del Toro did. And that's a little bit more of, like, the darker, grimmer side of, like, vampires and stuff as well. It's wholly different than what we get here in, like, right. 30 Days a Night. But I almost wonder if things, like... I'm not looking to get into, like... No, 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 like, no, 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 no. But I'm almost wondering if things, like, if The Strain and then, like, the Twilight series kind of made people be, like, there's a lot of vampires out here. Oh, definitely. An oversaturation. And, like, and like so, like, it was an oversaturation. Kind of the same way that we really, since, like, The Walking Dead started... We haven't really seen like many zombie movies after it. Yeah. Army of the Dead, not was like Army of the Dead being like one of the newest ones and Train to Busan. Right. Which have both actually been really good. Yeah. Like, like they're both really good. Those are two different movies. Yeah. But like yeah. they're both very and good Train for their to Busan own. Was, yeah, it was um, very, very good. Yeah, um, Tra- Train to Busan's fucking yeah, uh, wild wild. Um But yeah, no, I see staying away from uh that type of stuff, but um I'm just saying, it seems like it it, it could be in a more interesting series. I, th- I think I think there's a lot to it. There's a lot yeah. of meat. There's a lot of good characters. Well, because there's a lot of characters that we don't that we kind of get brushed aside because of time. And I'm sure that would that would be way more interesting. But I do like like when we're leaving the, when we at that back to the opening scene, uh, when you know you see the town leave and he does the you yeah. know he switches the number and the, how many towns people are still there mm-hmm. and basically like. It's you know? tradition. Yeah. Like, right. Ebony exactly. even says, exactly. like, why do you care about changing the sign? It's He's tradition. like, it's tradition. It's like, what we do. Now right? we're going to be able to keep track of how many are left. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. uh, and, like, so, like, then we, yeah. So, after we leave and we see, like, the difference of, like, the Ebon and Stella relationship, we live in the town for a little bit and we get to see who these people are. And... We see that, um, like, there's different dog kennels and stuff there. There are, like, clearly, like, grocery stores, different houses. Um, And, like you were saying, we see, like, people going, like, saying goodbye, like, hey, have a safe flight. You know, I swear I won't let the one guy saying, like, honey, I swear I won't live on Oreos for the next month. I like like those little moments. (laughs) Right, right, right. um, Like, they give you, they give you that, these nice little moments and then we also get the introduction of uh, a true introduction of Stella in the movie, mm-hmm. which is different. She is going, she's a fire marshal in the movie, I dug and that. she is going around doing her uh, like checking like sprinklers and like whatever a fire marshal does, like those finalized checks before nobody can reach this place for the next month. Right. So um, she's finishing up at one place, trying to get out before the big um before all the lights go out and a big storm hits and totally wipes them out for the next month or keeps them Land, un, uh, like, landlocked basically. landlocked untravelable for the next 30 days and night yeah and um that is like kind of where we start getting things to get kicked off because like 
Then they start, like, pacing. They start the pace of, like, her having to try and leave. And then she has the accident. And then Billy has to go out there right. and get her. And then the, But then there's, like, there's the problem at the kennels mm -hmm. and stuff. So, like, right away, like, kind of, like, at that 15-minute mark, then, then they kind of, like... I'll pump up the volume yeah, a little it bit. It becomes and, a and, mystery, and, like, in it. and well, it, it's, it, from the beginning, it's a mystery about what's going on. But like, it, it, it's you know, it could be just a movie about you know Alaskans living through this horrible, you know, this storm, horrible event, storm, storm, storm or yeah. something coming, you know, and blah blah blah. It could be anything, and then you know, then you see the murder of uh, the murder of the animals oh, at the God. kennel. That's as, so you know, tough. Uh, and then you, yeah, and then you see. Um, but I, I really enjoyed uh, I really enjoyed her character because she uh, comes up as the fire marshal and uh, she's just doing her thing and trying to get the hell out of Dodge mm -hmm. and she can't and it's just like a, it's just like um, it, 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 it actually adds like almost a level of comedy because we're about to get so dark grim gory bloody and like disgusting yeah. soon in this movie that like it adds like a little levity to it because like once. Billy gets her to the airport and she and she's missed it. It's all gone. She finally got picked up after her accident. Evan is at the dogs. Billy finally came to got her and he's like, I didn't know if Evan said 355 and Sherman or Rogers or Rangers or whatever. Right, right. And so like it's really funny because she's just like <sighs> Guess I have to add. like she knows yeah. now that everyone in the town is gonna make her and Eben have the conversation that both her and Eben don't want to do because we hear it on the on the phone call before when she's like, "Hey, I need a ride. If you want, we can talk on the ride." And yeah, then nobody's trying. To and then Eben is like, "Hey, Billy, go go pick up Stella for me." Yeah, yeah. And I got to deal with everything, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I I've got I other got stuff. Sense. There's someone there's a murder. We, we got their dogs. dogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, then this is where we start it, like, this is where I started hearing the music a little bit more. And I almost started feeling like the tension coming mm -hmm. after it. Like, once you see the, the, once you see the bloody mess in the kennels, it's awful. Um, but then you get like, then you also get the music kind of starts to change. The tension starts to come up and then we start getting like the, Oh, we need to start reaching out to like the neighboring towns. Like, let's figure out if anyone else. Let's figure out if Rain Wainwright or Anchorage or anyone else neighboring us that will be going through these same like weather conditions of like basically pitch blackness, thirty days a night. If anyone else is having these weird things like animal attacks. Oh, one thing we forgot to mention at the beginning is one thing that is in the comic and at the beginning is the uh, bonfire of cell phones. Oh, that was an interesting. I want. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. All the satellite phones that they find. Um. I I, I thought that was cool. Like, cut yeah, off again, communications. Like, What's going on? You know. Like mystery, really, yeah. really make them feel isolated no, and stuff. Yeah. And like, like that. That's like, actually an interesting com conversation that Evan and Billy have during like during that um like seeing the remnants of the bonfire of all the satellite phones and cell phones and stuff that are there. Like, Billy's just like, what, it's just some punk, like, little teenage kids right, or whatever. Well, yeah. and, and and Evan's like, I don't know, like, where's the note? Like, wouldn't they say, like, fuck them parents or, like, yeah, the yeah. world or something? Yeah. Like, like I feel like they would be going at Like, you this is one, one cop was trying to write it off and one cop was actually wondering what was going on here. Yeah. And, and like any normal person should, because a bunch of satellite mm -hmm. phones burned up is a very <laughs> sinister. Well, uh, because they were talking about like people had been talking about for like days prior. It's a simple little mi minor line of dialogue, but yeah. they say days prior, everyone like two days prior, everyone started losing their phones and started saying these things were going missing. So then, I, then you hear that, and then you think back to Ben Foster, and he's walking towards that boat, and you're like, "Where's right. he going? What was he doing? How long What's did it take ugly? him to get yeah. there? Right. What's going there?" And then um, we get we get more living time with the people of the town here. And again, like they do it, they do it again. They see us like who they are, um, who they are, where they're kind of living, how they're set up. Like we get like little bits of like the diner. We get um, a little bit of like the utilidor visit. And um, that's kind of like once we get to the Utilidor and this like second version of like the outer skirts Utilidor pipeline, like we kind of yeah, see it shows these us things. That, that you got to drive a bit to and, get anywhere, and, and that's the, another. And, and it's another 
isolation, just, desolation, being out in like quote unquote the uh, like out in the outskirts, the the boonies, like get, getting just being away from everyone. Um, and I I made the note here that they kind of touch on at the Utilidor visit, the Muffin Monster, when they see, isn't it bits of, like, a helicopter that mm. Carter shows them? Well, in the comic, the reason why they probably cut out um, the family from New Orleans is that when the dude gets there, he gets there in a helicopter because he gets the last helicopter that's available at the um, airport. Oh, so maybe it's a so, little nod so to like, that. He, it's a nod to that, but in the end, that dude shows up when it in the comic shows up at the final battle like in the city between the remaining people and the vampires and stuff like in the comic he shows up there the head vampire v jumps from the ground to a car to the roof of the building through the windshield of the helicopter rips the dude's head off jumps out the helicopter crashes so like the guy doesn't even accomplish what he does. Okay, so in the so, com- so like so like yeah, yeah. that's why they cut that out of the movie in the end Definitely. because they don't even let him live 100%. past past that. And but, that would have given away the vampire plot line, which was uh, I'm glad they didn't give that away. So fast. right, like you would have had to explain. And so I do this like vampire hunting. Society. I do like one of the last things they show you though is like in that Utilidor visit they show you what Carter calls the uh, muffin monster and it's just the like grinding up like teeth yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. like destroys metal and like he's like you foreshadowing foreshadowing yeah gun on the table exactly um gun on the table in the first act and so i can only assume that we see that helicopter there in there as a nod of being like what yeah, being like another what that happened that happened in there because to be fair what we see next is the first vampire attack then. Right. And it's and it's and it's right there at the um it's actually at the pipeline with the people um drinking after work. Right, right. And yeah, three, well, the, we get the, the we get the gener- we get the <laughs> generator first because the dude walks out and then he gets his head on the spike. Right. So that's right. That's the first one. Threesome and, workers, yeah. Yeah, and then the threesome workers that yeah, are working before, at the pipeline. That's line. the head on the spike. One of those are the head on the spikes, right? No, no, no. The oh, dude, okay, the, okay, the okay. lone dude with the lantern. He, correct, correct. He is right. the head that's on the spike. That's who he finds first, right? That's who Eben finds first, and then they see like, um, then they cut back to the uh, to the to the workers from the pipeline, and they are um, they get attacked. They like they literally just shoot out of. That like, was just such a funny, unnecessary like. Uh, girl works like you know it's progressive a girl works for us but we're all gonna fuck her after <laughs> yeah like come on get over rock it, guys. paper scissors on who, whose house we go to um, like what the fuck was that scene right it's just uh, uncomfortable weird, weird it really is kind of like uncomfortable when you think about it now because it's like, it was like you don't care like that those guys get that, that it's i don't know it was just a weird scene it, it, like it was it almost felt like an old jason or like where they, it's like the teenagers deserve to die you know what i mean right. like it felt like actually you know what that's a weird interesting point i wonder i wonder if that cuz i find like through the rewatch and like reading the comic and watching this like i almost watch this movie at least once a year around halloween and stuff Maybe every other year or yeah, so. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while. So. so I watch this pretty regularly. Excuse me, and I always feel that 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 the line about the threesome and stuff like I always find it unnecessary. Yeah, no, that's that, elite, elite, the least the to say the least, it's unnecessary. It's just, yeah. it's just like it, it's like oh, these people are in some polyamorous like whatever three thruple thing. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Uh, but they're like it. It almost deems them killable mm-hmm. and it's okay that they're about well because think about it and right like, right right there they're breaking like all the rules that we learned in stream and like all the horror movies before then they're had they're doing they're having they're drinking alcohol doing drugs and having sex right you're boom to be that, killed in yeah, any yeah. horror movie if you right. break those rules even though they just worked a hard ass fucking day and, and they're just trying to sex yeah, drugs they're just, they're just trying to chill the- um so then after we leave the pipeline and we leave that massacre we go back to the jail, and this is where, or no, we go back to the diner, and this is where Evan gets called into the diner, and where I was doing my bit at the beginning of the whiskey. Yeah, yeah raw exactly. Yeah. Meat. Yeah. Whiskey. Yeah. And that's like, it's really bad Ben Foster in right. this movie. But, it's, but he's um, in a, he's that's in a exactly movie. what he's doing. 
and the he's the Renfield, so he's not there. He's not processing things like he's got correctly. Black teeth. He's a, for the barely the teeth that he has yeah. there, um, and he. Uh, so then there's the issue. Evan shows there, and then Evan basically gets him back to the uh, jail cell. Like they right. get him back yeah, to he jail. Grabs, he grabs the diner woman uh, inappropriately. And Evan walks in. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Here? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then takes him back to the jail cell for or jail for questioning, basically yeah. because uh, you you're not from around here. I know pretty much everyone. That I know lives everyone. Here. I know you don't work here. I know you didn't fly in yeah. here. Like, um, so I'm going to take you in for questioning because we have a bunch of satellite phones that have been burned. I uh, right. John Reese has an entire kennel full of dead dogs. Right. And strange things are happening here in Barrow. And I'm going to ask you some questions, yeah, sir. Exactly. And then, so once we get to the jail scene, and like even then, like uh, we go to the jail. I think even once before, and we get introduced to Evan's grandmother and his younger brother. brother yeah. And the grandmother is like hilarious. Yeah, she's great. She's the, the, pot the, smoking, the, pot yeah, smoking yeah, grandma. Pot smoking grandma, like growing her own herb and stuff in and there, like, and yeah. like it. Awesome. It, Hilarious. Brother kept the secret. <laughs> and I like, loved it. And then the, but like, Evan's like, oh, so now I know why you wanted to go live with grandma. Yeah. He's like, no, I swear. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, um, but another comparison that we get, because like, really in this like kind of second act of like where we get like all the stuff in the town, the, um, the first leading from the first attack on until basically like they start going into like hiding that entire second act is like really different than what we get in the comic in the comic we live in the attacks on the vampire side which is actually really interesting mm-hmm. if you if you go back and like give but it a from get, the movie perspective uh, i can like, understand because 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 we're li- yeah yeah obviously when you make a new movie you want to do it with your characters that you the want that, character that you want the movie. audience to care about and stuff right um, but it's just interesting perspective in the comic yeah, of doing cool. it of doing it through the vampires and stuff. I really liked it. Um, but we get Stranger and Evan in jail. And the Stranger basically puts his hands on Evan, tries to like choke him, and then we hear a click of a gun and we zoom past Evan. Past the stranger, we see a barrel on the back of the stranger's head, and it's revealed that Stella's there with her gun pulled. That is literally panel, like that sliding dolly shot that they do is like the two, the like eight panels that they broke up between two pages directly from this first trade. It is so cool to see it up there, and it's like, Framed exactly like almost exactly alike. It's great. It, it, like, it, oh, Evan's in trouble. It, it, like, it's oh, so great. There we go. And then oh, here she, here she comes. Yeah. It, it is a great con- conspiracy that I that I love. Uh, or a g- great conspiracy. What am I talking about? Uh-huh. Great com- comparison yeah. that I love to point out because it's little things like that that I really that I'm like. That's sweet. Yeah. That that that's really sweet. That's that's the right way of like doing a direct take from like uh from the previous like comic or whatever. Right. Another good conspiracy. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um. And then we get the flash of lights, power going off, generators coming on, internet's down, phones down. We get that second level of tension, right, right, and right. like, right. yes, yeah, it's going down. And this guy's warning him, you know. He's like, he's like, yeah, and people are coming, but you're a crazy asshole who kills dogs. I'm not gonna listen to you. I'm not gonna listen to you at all. Right. I wouldn't. Uh, so you know, but the but the brother starts listening to him. Uh, gets a little scared and then the phones are out and then they need to figure out what's going on why is everything turning off and so yeah the remaining towns members then kind of start um like there's little freaking out a little bit they start freaking out which and normally then, which anyone would they're yeah. about to go dark for 30 days like I, they, they 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 got jenny's you know to back up but that's only they only got enough fuel for however you know for like, so long so to go black on the first day is not a good sign yeah to have all of these issues no cell phones and like the dog's dying and like all of this stuff now happening is like 
this is the worst of the worst mm -hmm. here. And, oh, excuse me. And so once they, w once the uh, remaining towns member kind of make their alliance, they, like, Evan kind of starts, like, running from places to places. Like, he runs to, like, the grocery store or, like, the hardware store, the diner. And he starts making people all meet up in, like, one place to, yep. like, try and figure out a plan of attack slash survival because something is strange in this neighborhood who you gonna call the ghostbusters yeah, yeah, ain't helping yeah, you no. right now dude we uh um, yeah yeah we just get it we just he's planning he's planning on something happening he doesn't know what's what's coming he just knows something something's weird and everybody's gonna need to pull their resources together and he's just acting as any sheriff would in that town and you know what i mean dude we really get now from like the 25 minute mark on maybe like the 30 minute to like the hour hour five mark it is like non-stop jumping between like chases and attacks hiding trying to figure out where to go it is very um like quick it, it's like very In contrast quick to the first act it's, it's yeah way, way different way yeah because it was like it's, it's a slow burn at the beginning it's it's which I like about it, it's 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 this it's it getting to know this gives you these lingering moments and shots like at the beginning and stuff like it really sets up this like foreboding like we were talking about foreboding yeah. vastness and like emptiness and like aloneness and then here now they start doing a lot more like medium and close up shots you get a little you get a little less of the wide shots from like the 25 minute to like the hour and five minute mark of this movie because it's a lot more of the chasing and stuff the only time you get a wide shot is really a down angle you'll get it from a street and then you'll see the, the like vampires walking up on like like across the like uh so on the yeah roofs so the first stuff. time we see the vampires is when uh any that well you know the first time they see the vampires is when uh Eben and Stella are driving. Yeah, you know to see what's going on after the after after the little exchange. And they get with, chased. And they get well. It, that's what's funny about this, to me. Like these vampires are insane. Like mm -hmm. like the, the, we we seen the vampires in the movie before that, but the, the first time they see them, like all of a sudden she's looking through her binoculars and she's like, "Get back in, in the, the car!" And she that, sees something. You know what I mean? That's get back in the comic in the too. They're yeah, looking yeah. through. They're zooming. And she's like, and like, she's, she's like, like, get back what? in the, and get back in the car, flying. because they just see them running. Backwards. At them. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, it's a cool scene. And then all of a sudden, that one jumps on, and like that dude was like, it's like these these vampires are extra. They're not normal. Right? Like so, like these vampires are like the vampires. cousins to Zack Snyder's zombies from him, him and James Gunn's remake of Romero's Dawn of the Dead that he then continued into Army of Darkness. Right. Like like. These are their cousins. These are right. their vamp vampiric cousins and stuff. Right, they, it's like because like they were like, they're all crazy the, fast paced and like. Who they, does their dry cleaning though? I just need to know. And like it, that one, he had very slick what? back hair. Can they see themselves in mirrors? I don't. I have a lot of questions because he's he's got nice hair, you know. And I know it's nice hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, for real, like game recognized game. Yeah. So he. <laughs> I just, I just like the, I like the vampires look and aesthetic in this right, movie. But they looked like monsters when they, when they were vampires. Well, like, they, they and, got and, those and, like. And, but in the comics, I noticed, teeth. I noticed their, their like jaws would unhinge almost. Yeah. Like, yeah, like so, so that maybe that that. The they, they subtleness almost, in it, this movie was a little cooler, but yeah, they got bloody, man. They got they, they get they, they get, get super yeah. bloody, and they're they're all like wearing suits. They look and like nice, that's like, what like, I mean. Tire, like, who does like, their dry cleaning afterwards? Yeah. Like. It's all, they start off pretty nice looking. Mm -hmm. you know? They all do. They look like, you know, just like spiffy people. Town. Yeah. Spiffy people looking to spend some money or whatever. Um, and so during all of these chases and stuff, there's a couple of highlights that I have. One of them is the UV that Evan does on the female vampire. Um, the UV light from right. Grandma's uh, weed plant. That is that like great. Yeah. one of my favorite. Because so I'll be all right against vampires. Yeah, right? <laughs> that is one of my uh that is one of my favorite favorite shots of like just the burn and the grossness that they make. Like the makeup's really good in that, the yeah. like burn and peel away. Ah, oh, it just looks so good. I love it. Yep. I love it so much. Um, one thing that is also weird is like they are not weird, but one thing that I'm always like, oh, poor little girl. When they use the little girl's bait. Bait, yeah. 
And then, um, well, she was the first bait was like she was like teenager. True. The, the little little girl. Was like, and yeah, the little yeah. little girl, like they like to be yeah. fair, Stella gets yeah, yeah. like gets and like pulls. The underneath. other one was more like yeah. Like, but, yeah, she... that bait scene's pretty rough because that all right. So, so before that, they the that they're getting together after that scene, and then they get in that they find that attic, you know, and they're yeah. chilling in the attic for a little while, contemplating what to do. And then yeah, that that then the bait happened, the bait scene. That's yeah. pretty rough. That's tense because you have to make a decision in that moment. Yeah, you got like, to decide. Do we decide. try to do we try to save her? Because when, uh, because when it looks they know like she's because, already because already, all of the they still have no idea really what's going. If on. she's bitten Who, or what the, yeah. yeah, but what does bitten mean to them? Right. They don't, they don't even understand that these are vampires yet. They just know they're being attacked. Yeah, they know that they're being attacked and that it is a like brutal. Attack that they're yeah, making. it's it's these vampires are smart too. They have like a, some kind of language. I don't know if it's, it sounds German. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, they have yeah. some kind of language. They're speaking to each other. Their battle tactics are amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they don't they don't just come in with the, like like stupid monsters. These are very highly organized vampires. And like who, that lends who, itself to who saying without saying um, like that that is all very much so like. From the setup of like them in their in the comic of like their story, there's Marlo who is like the outgoing kind of like exploring type guy, and that's played by Danny Huston um, that we see in here, the, like the lead vampire and stuff. And then he answers to this guy V, mm-hmm. who is the big head honcho vampire, and he actually shows up in the comic and he actually kills Marlo's character because he's like. Why did you do this? This is the worst thing you could have done because this exposes us. Uh, oh, we have finally, okay. we have finally, as a vampire culture, got them to stop hunting us, and you annihilate an entire town. Okay, I feel. And you. like, so like he, like V, just shows up and just like knocks right. Marlo's head off, That's and it's literally, and in in the comic, it is the one thing that Evans like. They can kill each other. They can kill each other. Yeah, so that's my and okay, um, okay, that's cool. And so, like, it's very interesting to see that, and it's like a conclusion that they that um, he kind of gets to at the end in the movie of like. Well, um, yeah, he uh, realizes yeah, yeah, the yeah. only way for the him to man up is to become a vampire. Actually, mm-hmm. he's not manning up at all. Like, there's no there's no human that's gonna go against these these things. Uh, oh. They're basically superhumans, they're right? Like you know, they're not ju- like I said, they're not just vampires. They're not just coming and sucking your blood, and they're and it's not like the two teeth, like like they're, they're ripping they're, you apart. They're animalistic in every sense of the word. Like they run like True cheetahs, you know, like beastly yeah, creatures. Yeah. But they're also super smart. They're yeah. Also, so it's like it's it is that degree of like okay, what's their what's these what's these vampires' end goal? Right. Because they've got plans. There's yeah, something yeah. going it on. Seemed, yeah, it seemed. Um, yeah, it seemed. Yeah. And so, uh, but in the we, movie, there was there did, didn't seem that they didn't they kind of got rid of the end goal in the co- comic. They, yeah. there was seemed to be let's stay vampires are trying to stay secret. This is an outlier group. Yeah, you know from that from the regular vampires who are, yeah. who are trying to stay away from that, stay secret, and, and all of that know, kind of stuff. And so, like, like you could have stretched them thirty days out a little bit. You know, <laughs> right? Well, and like so, like you know, easily you, know. you get easily you could do. 20 episodes in this, no problem. 30 days a night, literally an episode about a day in the life or whatever. Um, you can even skip around and just do 22 episodes or whatever. If you do hour long, you can do like a couple of days in that hour long episode or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, You're right. I, God. Hot take. 30 days a night, TV series. Yeah, right. Said first. <laughs> um, so 30 <laughs> days is, is, but it can, be long, can feel long. There's, w- there's one more... The shape. movie didn't feel like it was thirty days. You know no, I mean? exactly. They, I mean, it feels like to it be fair like, though, it's if, like a two-hour movie. It's yeah, not, no, it's no, not it's not a short. short movie. I'm just saying it doesn't feel like there's they have thirty days left to go. Like they, right. they, there's there's like you know it feels like the action happens in a couple over a week. Like, yeah, it, maybe a couple days. Like maybe of the thirty days, a lot all of this action is happening a, a total of like seven. Yeah, of those it's just it's just only yeah. because it's a two-hour movie. Whatever, it, yeah. you can't. And to be fair, they don't necessarily like 
always keep the days in this. Like, they kind of throw, like, random days right, out right. there and stuff. Similar into the movie, like, week or day, whatever. Um, but one thing for, like, the fighting and the chasing before they kind of... Before the, we get into this, like, final third act of... And, like, start finishing up the movie. The one thing that I love and what made me always love uh, uh, Bo in this movie is the sacrifice with his tractor and stuff like oh, yeah, that tractor it's thing my turn, you know, like it's my turn. that tractor thing that he comes riding in again, on the and first, woo, we see woo, that in the first woo, act woo, yeah again and, and well the in the first act we see that in the first act with with uh, uh Stella getting hit hit with it what's mm-hmm. his name Hap had hazardly running into her to knock her out on her way to the airport like it all comes back um I well, appreciate it, I appreciate circular writing I, I I like the I like with Bo too you know Evan's like you know he lives up on the South Ridge giving him a citation every once in a while makes him like right. ma- he's reminds an, him he's that he's an outlier in the community that, but, that, but that he is let, a part yeah, of, the, of community. the community yeah you can be an outlier and still right, be a again, part of that it. That would be cool in a series, seeing that yeah. that, that, that that character extended upon mm-hmm. him. Because like, seeing, seems, seeing, seems seeing, like seeing what longer. happened after that and citation to... when he went home, after that citation when Bo goes home, after like in that first act and stuff, seeing what he does after that, how he reacts, and then he's just like, or whatever like we get the one line that kind of shows that he's just like whatever about it when he's like i'll add it to my collection Mm -hmm. but they reduce like what could be a really cool scene down to one line and that but again that's if we were going to give it a tv show as opposed to giving it a two-hour movie right um and the movie's great right what it was and uh when it was made you know like yeah i just keep seeing like when i keep when i the the like I said, I ha- I hadn't seen it in a while. You watch it yearly, so like I I'm seeing like oh this would be, you know yeah. this would be neat. Uh, but yeah. Um, finally we've got they're at the police station. Carter reveals himself that he's been bit, yep. and that his um, family that he had talked about before saying that Martha and the kids will come up had actually died years prior and that's the reason why he came he came up here to die basically is what he says um and then he you know he kills himself shoots himself his time yeah Yeah. so it's his time and stuff and um it's a really sad but really um important moment of like trying of like trying to like we've got to press on and we get bit we mm-hmm. don't turn the vampires right away. Yeah, there's, there's time. A time. There's a time period. There's we need a, we need to understand that as an audience. Yeah, uh, that you know. you, it's not like instantaneous or whatever. Right. Um, which, to be fair, in other mediums of like zo- of like vampires and zombies, so like creature bite turns is really you know werewolves and stuff. Usually, it's never pretty immediate. Right. Really. Um, it, there's usually still, some yeah. time lapse. Um, in between, the characters need to know yeah, that too. Like, yeah, the characters don't know. Well, they, what? Because everybody, they, everybody in that room, vampire. everybody in that room just learned a little bit something, and it makes it, it gives Evan one more step to like his final move. Yeah. Um, so they leave the police station. They leave the police station. They go, and they find Billy, and they make their final ascent to the Utilidor. Yep. And while they're there trying to make that final escape, Stella gets stuck in town. And then that's where we talked about the second baiting of the girl that Stella is actually able to get yeah, off the street. The, she's sitting under the, the the house, you know. Come on, come on. So the girls like girls like so in shock, and it was a, it was a she's all bloody. It's you know seeing a, seeing a little girl like that's always tweaky. It's little yeah. kid, little seeing little kid. It's it's not scene. like it's yeah. not fun to watch. The trauma. Yeah, yeah no. it, it, it's definitely a, it, a difficult yeah. thing to see, um, but. This will bring. This brings me to another um, comparison, in um, the comic where they mainly hide out. In, at, like in the movie, we see them hiding out in like a diner in an attic and underneath this house. Um, in the comic, they the group of them really stay hidden under a house near a furnace, which is really interesting. It is very much so like how we see Stella and Gail here. Gail's the little girl that Stella is able to like. Uh, for lack of a better word, get off the street and put her <laughs> underneath yeah, the house yeah. with her and like hide her from the vampires. So she is, um, so they do that and it is, um, it's just a great little 
um, comparison that yeah. we have going on there. And then we have the final, basically the final battle, right? Yep. We've got um, the one one of the women left uh, finds Vaca at the Utilidor. They uh, at the Utilidor we got Evan, we got his brother, we got yeah, we're leading up we to got the final Billy, battle here, and then we got and then we got Billy, and then we've got the other woman. And I can't think of the woman's name, but she finds vitamins, chocolate. And vodka mm-hmm. <laughs> hey. up at the Utilidor. Let's party. I Let's have hanging. a good time. Right. Um, so then they were actually followed to the Utilidor. One, yeah, of, the, they one of the one yeah. of the vampires followed them there, goes there, and sneaks in and attacks them. Right. And this is a brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see poor Billy or poor uh, what's his name uh, the. It's Bill. It's Billy. Yeah, Billy. Yeah. Poor oh, Billy. Billy. Poor oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Yeah, um, Billy guess. meets a grim death. Yeah. He loses an arm to the muffin uh, monster. Yeah. He uh, has been bit, so he's changing right. as well. And then he gets two swift hits to the neck by an axe yeah. by Eben, and it is a horrifically gory lovely practical effects. Yeah, definitely. Scene. Like, so, it is gory, it is gruesome, it is gross. But as somebody who loves the art of filmmaking and seeing how this stuff is actually goes from, like, the on-set practical stuff yeah, to, like, it. what we see on film, I love it. It's stuff that's reminiscent of Evil Dead from Sam Raimi way back when and Dead Alive by Peter Jackson and all of these... Old school. It's just a, it's gnarly. Yeah. It's the only way to say yeah. it is oh, that yeah. it's a gnarly death. Yeah. Um, the vampire gets tossed into the muffin monster, and we see that body like implode into a mist of just blood. Yep. Um. Oh God. Just thinking about that just made my gears <laughs> turning against each other. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Crazy. Wild. Good um, scene. Uh, so that leads to the which that leads to uh, Abin realizing what he has to do. Abin Abin goes ahead and he's like, "Oh, you know what I'm gonna have to do? Mainline some of my friends' blood." <laughs> no, but the <laughs> final stuff that makes him do it, and it's probably it's part of like this third act now of what I called of being almost exactly like the comic. First in the com- in the comic, they set the town ablaze. V tells Marlo to set the town ablaze. Which That's our plan. Which is a good tactic, that, a battle tactic. Get uh, everyone out of the houses. Because get everyone out of the houses, burn the burn everyone, kill everyone. Gone. And because in the comic they have the helicopter crash, they say it's the the fuel from the crash that lights the fire of the town that will decimate the town and leave no remnants of their axe there. Mm-hmm. So that's in the comic. In the movie. Marlo, still alive, we never meet a V, um, in in the movie, Marlo sets the town ablaze to smoke out Stella, Gale, and whatever few remaining people exactly. might still be there. And it's in this final act of desperation, in this final moment where Eben has that that idea of, I think if I become one, I can beat one. No, oh, yeah. I think he I realizes think. at that point the only way is to, is to become one. And he realizes, hey, it takes a bit of time. I have some, uh, you know, I'm willing to go. Put it that way. He's willing to kill himself. He's willing to sacrifice he's real. Himself. He's literally willing to put it all on the line to make sure that Stella, his wife, well, in the movie they're separated, still could be married, um... Mm-hmm. Th- the love of his life, making sure that she still gets out of this alive and in one piece. And Evan injects himself. He goes down to the town, goes, walks up to Marlo, all of the other vampires leave him around. It's exactly like the comic. Yeah, like, like okay. all of this is exactly like the comic. Circle the land, around them. They, yeah. they all circle around, and then... It feels like very, like, a, um, like a high school... Like a, a high school, like, a, like, like yeah. a high school grammar school. We're meeting you in the grass alley after school, man, yeah. and we're gonna fight it out. I always love scenes like that in movies um, when it's like 
When it's like, why can't they all just beat up the one guy at once? And it's like, no, let's have a, let's have a noble battle. <laughs> it's like, that's right. not how they've been acting this entire movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but for you... Nobility you just shows it death. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I get it. Yeah. Um, one scene, no. It's... it's uh, he, he at first he's really just getting his ass handed to him. Basically. He is because I think he's still transforming. Oh, yeah, you know, he's still getting that blood running yep. through him, and it's still transforming and him. The vampire still kind of doesn't realize what's going on. He just smells. He's like keeps smelling his blood, and like he's realizing something's different. About yeah, him. he's realizing that it's changing. And at one point, he even like hits him Scratches and like him, yeah. and like he turns. Like Evan turns, he gets scratched. Marlo pulls him back up in the movie, looks at him, and then Evan's teeth have started yeah. to change. And then he, like, almost, like, walks away. Evan talks him back, and this is panel for panel from the comic. Evan punches Marlo through, I mean, in the comic it's V, in the movie he punches Marlo through the open mouth exploding his brain and his skull out the back end and the yeah, other so side. Funny. And Marlo just drops. And it's great in the comic because they give you the narration of all of the vampires have lost their will. Mm -hmm. They have seen their leader defeated and they no longer feel the need to be here. And they all in the comic, like the next two panels are like them, like slowly dissipating as Marlo's just laying in his blood and like just in his own death Mm -hmm. there as Evan is standing over him. Stella comes up to him. So in the comics, does he kill V? In the comics, he kills V. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the comics, he kills V. So he's Mar- he's he's killing V in that moment because yeah. Marlo had already been killed by yeah. V. Okay, so that's interesting. That's cool. Yeah. Um. So Evan does that, and that's because part- V was probably trying v, to what get v rid of the like, evidence and yeah. kill everybody now. Yeah. Now everybody has to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And like and like V says that in the comic, he's like. You, I was hoping I could stop you before you did this because this is going to be more trouble than you ever thought. And literally, it's in that moment that he slaps him and like kills him. Um, that V kills Marlo in the comic, but Marlo is the main vampire who dies by Eben punching him yep. through in the movie. And then finally, like Eben dies, you know, from ash to ash, right. dies, goes, yeah, blows Stella. away. Yeah. With Stella it's in his arms, scene. That's kind of a it, it, scene. it's really beautiful, and it's exactly the final panels of of yeah. this first trade. Just for him, it. like going through that pain, but it's like, all right, at least I got her next to me. You know? Right, I've got. Which again, wish they didn't have to do the un the divorce thing. The right, thing. and like that's kind and of the like, I, oh, you got to sacrifice yourself for. It's, it's like it's just like that white knight shit was bullshit. Cause she was defending herself the whole fucking movie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? She was a badass on her own in her own right. Yeah, she didn't need Evan. At, you know what I mean? No, like no, at, no, at no, any no. point, she they, didn't. so it could have been. It would have just been cool if they were working together. It, it just it made her seem. Um, it made him seem like a better character and her seem like a worse character. Right. You know, you rooted um, for him more than her, and it was like a, she was kind of like a stick in the mud at certain points, and it's like she didn't, that didn't have to be. Right. Like that. You didn't need to make her like that. Yeah, um, you could have made her just like, as cool or just as interesting. The woman that just didn't like, yeah, she doesn't understand. Yeah, like, she just know? doesn't get it or whatever. Yeah. Um, she clearly was making moves. Right. And then, so I've got two final questions here before we sign off. Um, what do you like most about this movie? What is either your favorite character, favorite scene, chase, whatever? What What is your favorite part of this movie? My favorite part is favorite, the is the that last scene, the one he punches through. But I also like the the opening act. I like the first act because I like I like the fact that this movie doesn't feel like a vampire movie like for the first like yeah a lot of the movie it's just you know, weird it, it, it's tension like some, kind yeah, of building yeah it's it's a good it's a good scary movie in that way yeah in that way that it doesn't just treat it like just a scary movie it's like it's trying to set that character development up that I'm that I'm trying to say would look better in a series but it's it tried it tried yeah, really yeah. hard you know what I mean it, it, I it, mean it's it, probably it a benefit could. that like at least. I don't know if Steve Niles did the first draft or the last draft, but like him at least starting it before other people got involved, it probably lends itself better to that in the fact that like it was he it, knew it, what it could got, be cut. Yeah, yeah he knew yeah. what he could cut, what he but, could change and stuff. Yeah, I'm sure they cut different. Um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But uh, uh, yeah, that I like. I just I, um, I'm trying to think of another scene. Uh, 
I, I just I remember being in the theaters, walking out of the theaters, loving the movie. Yeah. When I re- and and rewatching it and always loving it, and this time I loved, I still love it, but I have you know I have more you know yeah. more critical analysis of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, yeah, this could be cool. This could this this was a little like obtuse. This was a little didn't, unneeded. We didn't need this part. Well, and it felt it's, like it just went horror movies. Not rarely age well. Yeah. You know what I mean? The dialogue, especially. Yeah. But like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that that that's, uh, with um, with TV with the series where you get more time to spend with characters, like we're, we, that's a trope that can we we can end or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hopefully. Absolutely. Um, I still think, God, I think the final fight with Marlo, or, I really like. Ben Foster chewing his scenery with, with the meat, raw yeah. meat, right. and whiskey. Yeah. That whole thing is, like, great. Right. And then the whole, that secondary scene that we get of, like, him in the jail cell with Evan and Stella and all of that stuff of, like, pushing the buttons, like, you can't Who be is protected. They, you know? Who is that? You can't yeah. be protected. Yeah. They're coming for you. Ooh, and, that? like, all of that that he does, like, he's very creepy, very ominous. So, actually, I think, like, my favorite part is Ben Foster's, maybe, performance overall. Because he, to me, is the most unsettling. Like, he unsettles me in it. And, like, and for sure, like, I'm always like, ugh. Always yeah, gay. He, he's the heebie-jeebie guy. Definitely. He's the one who gives you the heebie-jeebies in this movie. Guy. Always. Um, final question. Why do you recommend this movie and the, or this comic? to somebody well i think it's just a cool vampire movie in general because it, it these vampires do feel different yeah than other vampires these vampires seem uh to work to get like a pack you know what mm-hmm. i mean it's not it's not what most vampires are usually loners or like or mm-hmm. like you know maybe they live in a house with a few other people and they don't get along with each other but this one seemed like these you know they had their own it, it's just different they're different vampires and and again it didn't feel like a vampire movie for the fir- for the first while of it so it, it was it was just like it's a it's a movie you might be able to uh, watch with somebody who didn't necessarily like vampires before this or like something like that they mm-hmm. might be over vampire movies yeah. this is a good one for them i think absolutely and you know what i agree that the feeling um, of it i would say personally that for me I was always like this came out around the same time as like one of the twi- one of the early Twilight's movies, one of the first ones or whatever. Right. And I just remember th- this coming out in contrast to Twilight and I was like they don't sparkle. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And then like so that was my initial thing. They don't sparkle, thank you, which is only funnier now knowing that because like i never really paid attention to the twilight movies finding out that david slade eventually makes a a sparkling vampire movie is also very funny uh like hey you did this fucking crazy one how about uh um, well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. He know he knows he knows horror, and he also knows how to make things feel familiar. But well, then he's trying to make a character driven movie. Because think them, so. about it, the story of Hard Candy is has a major third act twist with it, and then we've got the his follow up. He's like, I'm not saving the third act twist. I'm not doing a third act twist. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. S- I'm going to set feeling, I'm going to set tone, I'm going to set atmosphere, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to change it. Well. it. Yeah. We're going to do a complete 180 on him, and that's what he does, like what we were talking about in that act one of like, we don't really know what's going on, it doesn't feel like a vampire movie, it's definitely got some mystery and some like forebodingness, but like that could end up turning yeah, into action, like, no. that could end up turning into horror which yeah, is what it was yeah it could be like was. some film noir it could be some like yeah. like a murderer comes to town yeah it, 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 it didn't a necessarily group of murderers come to town right it doesn't, it, doesn't necessarily but then the oh why is it night oh okay vampires would have a good time in this place and then yeah you start thinking about it a little bit more right okay do you have any final thoughts before we sign off here this, is, this was fun thanks man yeah I can't wait for us to get a little bit more of these in the bag um so, uh, we thank you for joining us today. Please like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media. Like us on, uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Like our Facebook page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, with the Triple C Collective comparisons commentary track. I'm your host, Jimmy Clark, 
And with me, Ms. Colin Shea. We are signing off for the t- for today. You guys stay spooky. Yeah. Halloween.